have Alan Clampett here with me. He's our technical marketing engineer for the NUC. So when you guys ask me the tough questions, I'm going uh, to defer Alan, to me. Alan uh, chime in, and I'm John Detheridge, director of marketing for the Intel NUC team. And at CES this year, we are launching a complete new lineup of uh, core-based, uh, Broadwell-based uh, NUC products. Well, everyone in the room is familiar with the NUC? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. And so what we're showing here is a generational uh, differences between uh, the different generations of NUC since the beginning. So this is our Ice Canyon, which launched in late 2012. And then uh, the Haswell-based Wilson Canyon, which launched last year. And then, uh, and then we've got uh, Rock Canyon, which is launching now. Okay. So I'm going to walk you through some of the key features of the Rock Canyon here, and then uh, we can ask some, uh, answer some questions at that point. Okay. So first of all, it's obviously based on the fifth generation core processors, the Broadwell, right? And so your processor and graphics performance is going to be significantly better than Haswell generation. Um, secondly, if you line these guys up a little bit closer, you'll notice that this is even slimmer than ever. And so we're now down to less than 30 millimeters, which is getting cl pretty close to one inch tall, okay? And so we're adding more features and more performance and, and getting it smaller generation after generation. So we continue to show our innovation with these types of products. In addition, uh, if you go inside the product, uh, you've got uh, um, PCIe, uh, mini PCIe being replaced by M.2. And so now we have M.2 interfaces moving forward. Uh, for the SSDs, the M.2 will support either SATA or PCIe up to four lanes. And so you'll get some amazing uh, performance off your SSD. So your processor, graphics, and SSD performance will improve from generation to generation. Another cool thing about all our consumer SKUs moving forward is we'll have wireless uh, down integrated into the product. And so previous generations, we, uh, Wilson Kane did not have the wire Wi-Fi in it, and you had to get a separate card. Now we've got an M.2 BGA chip that's soldered down to the Borlo 12 by 16 chip. It's AC, it's uh, Bluetooth, so um, Intel's uh, 7265, which is uh, our new latest and greatest Wi-Fi Bluetooth uh, chip, okay? Another, uh, one last cool thing that I wanted to go through that I'm very excited about is the uh, lids. And so moving forward, this generation of NUC will have replaceable lids. So if you've tried to take a lid off a NUC in the past, um, you would actually destroy it. Yeah. And so uh, now I can do it with my fingers. And so basically, uh, from a cosmetic perspective, you could uh, um, buy the NUC kit with this lid, take this lid off, put another lid on that might have a different color, a texture, corporate logos, photos of things, so on and so forth. Um, and so uh, we will be providing mechanicals of this online. So if you have access to a 3D printer, you can make your own lid. Uh, even more cool uh, beyond the cosmetics is you can actually improve your functionality with, um, by adding new technology and stuff to your lid. So this is an example of one of our taller NUCs that um, has, and you can see the logo here, NFC. Okay? So you take the lid off of this and you look inside. And you've got a little uh, PCB here, and that's got an NFC module on it, okay? okay? And then you cable it down to a header on the board <coughs> to hook the NUC board up to the NFC module. So now you put the lid back on, and you can do a tap and pay, a parent share, NFC type of uh, communication going here, improving the functionality of the NUC. Another cool thing we're doing is you guys have probably heard of Hopog. Uh, we're working with them. And this is not the production unit. It's just an early prototype, obviously. And they just a couple days ago sent this to us and basically said, uh, you know, let's uh, talk about a TV tuner NUC, okay? So you buy the NUC with the lid, you take our lid off, and you put this TV tuner module on. And now you've got a monolithic, you know, one-piece home theater PC. Uh, the taller version means you get the two-and-a-half-inch uh, drive down below, so you can uh, store all your files with a couple terabytes. You can still have an M.2 SSD um, on the board itself and the TV tuner card, and boom, you've got a you know, one-piece home theater PC, which looks you know pretty nice in your living room, right? And so that's really the, the power of the lid is not just the cosmetic aspect, but also expanding the functionality. You could do other tall LEDs that might give you more USB ports or serial ports mm -hmm. or LAN ports in order to expand the I.O. communications capability of the NUC. 
So basically, a lot of new cool things going on with this generation. You know, the performance improvements with graphics, processor, and SSDs, the Wi-Fi built-in, and a slimmer form factor with these replaceable LEDs. And so continue to bring new innovation into the marketplace with NUC uh, as we drive this category of small form factor. With that, um, I'll ask, do you guys have any questions on this generation? Yes. Well, um, I guess I'm, I'm kind of curious how you see uh, the position of, of Nook in the marketplace. Like who's buying it now? Who do you expect to, to be buying it? Yeah, it, it, it's, you know, it's all over the place. But also, um, so in the consumer space, uh, we're seeing you know, the DIY community is really rallying behind a home theater PC, media streaming PC in the living room. I mean, there are some people that would just use it as a desktop replacement in their home office, but a lot of it has to do with living room and associated with a, a big screen TV, you know, entertainment type of uh, usages. In business, though, we're seeing uh, tons of different opportunities. In addition to just PC replacement uh, in areas where the desktop is, you know, a premium, we're also seeing uh, in what we would call PC-like embedded spaces, usages for digital signs, kiosks, point of sale terminal, medical equipment, vending machines, all sorts of areas where scalable horsepower, decent performance is needed in a super small form factor. A thin client is another area we're starting to see take off in the enterprise and um, school spaces. And so it is a pretty broad range of usages. If you look our, at our volume that we've shipped so far, roughly 60% of it is shipped into business and about 40% of it to the consumer segment. So it is pretty even balance that we've seen um, you know, throughout the two or three or two plus years now that we've been shipping the product. It seems like there's a lot of, uh, you know, now we're starting to see a lot of uh, um, imitators would not be kind of but a lot of other A lot of a people lot of are other joining products. the party. <laughs> it's a, a great other, party. <laughs> a lot of other mini PCs. Uh -huh. we, uh, love, we love that. Do you think that there should be more kind of standards for for how they're built? Because it seems like there's they're all there's no sort of motherboard standard for it. Yeah, I, I don't know. Proprietary seems to be widely accepted anymore. I mean, if you look at tablets and notebook computers and a lot of the smaller products that people take, um, they're somewhat custom as far as you know the mechanicals of it, right? Obviously, things like uh, interfaces and communications and such, it's very important to continue to maintain standards. Um, we've talked a lot internally about, you know, is there a true need or a strong need or, you know, a real need to drive standards and, you know, this type of form factor. So far, we've uh, chosen not to. And a lot of that is because we want to let the technology that comes our way allow us to do um, what, you know, improve what we do. And so what I mean by that is smaller connectors, uh, uh, different, you know, processors that are gonna require different, you know, placement of the thermals and such, right? Uh, we wanna be able to go with that versus having a standard kind of, you know, limit what we can do or having to drive a new standard every generation as these yeah. technologies let you get smaller and smaller or slimmer and slimmer, right? And so that said, I mean, the one thing we have committed to do is at least keep our mounting holes in the same place. So if you uh, invest a lot of money to a tool or chassis, um, you actually don't have to reinvest every generation. And uh, our chassis partners are getting pretty creative about uh, you know, doing back panel and front panel type configurations where it's just a punch out option depending on where we move USB ports and things like that. And so, um, you know, I wouldn't call that a standard though putting the mounting holes in the same place. I mean, it's just, but you know, I think it's really come down to that when it comes to small. It is really, you, you kind of want to let the technology go where the te let technology lets you go, right? Other questions? The answer is mine. Awesome. Bluetooth, well, AC, so M.2, and NFC. That, so we like the direction the small was taking us. I mean, our yeah. legacy is desktop motherboards. We, we started with these huge ATX boards back you know, 22 years ago. We went to micro ATX, mm -hmm. mini ITX, then mini, the NUC. And I want to talk about one other product now that's even getting smaller. And uh, literally, this is an easy one right out of the shirt pocket here. And this is called Intel Compute Stick. And yeah. so basically, 
We are announcing that we'll be shipping this product in March, so we're not shipping it now. But we're okay with you guys talking about it and uh, writing mm -hmm. articles about it. Uh, we think it's an exciting new category that we're driving here. And so I'll walk you through a couple of the high-level specs on uh, this little guy here. All right. So once again, it's called Intel Compute Stick. It's got 32 gigs of storage, 2 gigs of RAM. It's running with a quad-core Atom Bay Trail tablet processor. And uh, it's got Windows 8.1 with Bing. And so basically you take one of these, you plug it into your TV or into any kind of monitor, and you turn that TV or monitor into an entry-level PC. So it'll give you that PC environment with the Windows that you're familiar with and let you do a lot more than something like a Chromecast uh, you know, device would be where you're kind of limited to what uh, Google would offer you on that type of environment. This is going to give you that full PC type of environment. Uh, looking at the I.O., it's got an HDMI, so you're going to need an HDMI port to plug it into. And then on this side, you've got a USB 2 connector. This is micro USB. Today, unfortunately, we're needing to power this to get full performance capability. You're going to need to plug this into the wall through the micro USB. But we're hoping as uh, things improve on MHL with the HDMI, uh, we'll eventually be able to get full performance by powering this off of a a monitor or TV that provides you enough power uh, through the HDMI port with MHL technology. Okay, and so it's kind of the first generation. You will see improvements like you've seen with the NUC over time. The 32 gigs of storage is not enough. Um, you've got a micro SD slot on here that could get you up to another 128 gigs or so. And so our suggested MSRP for the Windows-based version will be $149. We're going to do a, a more, a less featured, more value-oriented version with eight gigs of storage, <coughs> one gig of RAM, and Linux OS. And the suggested MSRP for that will be eighty-nine dollars. And so, as you can see, you know we continue to get more and more innovative, driving you know Intel technology into new categories of product. And we think this type of form factor has a lot of cool usages uh, in the home, maybe an entry-level home theater PC in uh, commercial spaces uh, with uh, things like digital science, kiosks, maybe schools, um, thin client areas where, you know, um, small is valued and the performance that the Atom processor can give you is good enough. Okay? Any questions on Intel Compute Stick? Yeah, is that uh, Bay Trail or yeah, Cherry Trail? Yeah, it's Bay Trail. We'll, we'll be updating with Cherry Trail as, it, as Cherry Trail rolls out. The first uh, product that we're taking to market to start shipping in March is a uh, Patreon processor. Okay. Yeah, there'll be two different SKUs, both, yeah. both, both in March. Yes. Other questions? Um, you guys are free to uh, roam about, pick things up. Uh, photo, we've got a little light box over there if you want that type of environment. Uh, and so um, everything is okay to photo and, uh, um, you know, get out there on the wires uh, as soon as you see fit. Al and I will be hanging out here, so feel free to ask us all the tough questions and we'll do the best we can to answer.